Hey girls and guys, this is Armored Brownies, I'm Hayes, and in the next couple of videos I'm going to bring you through the painting of my kindred masks, the Lamb and Wolf. But, do you want these masks? Because in the next couple of days I'm going to be giving away the mask that I paint up in these videos. In a couple of days I'll be telling you how. The best way to not miss out is by subscribing to this channel and following me on Facebook. And here's one I made earlier. Quite a nice paint job. I'm really proud of it. It involves a couple of different techniques and you can even see out of it despite having painted eyes. And I'm going to show you how I got these effects. We start off with these raw polyurethane masks. I say raw, these aren't fresh out of the mould because fresh out of the mould the eyes are still covered in polyurethane. They have lots of flash and flangey bits that need cutting off. But I'll go over cleaning up a polyurethane mask in a different video. In fact, I have covered it in the past, but... I need to redo that video. So we're going to start working with this plastic canvas. It's a material used for embroidery. It's 14 gauge, which refers to the number of holes per square inch. And we're just going to literally cut circles out of it and hot glue it into the eyes. The reason we're putting this in before we even start painting it is because we need to undercoat it. Because we won't be able to paint directly onto this plastic canvas as it will repel all paint that we put on it. Besides, we do really want to put a base coat down on this mask and there's no better way than using a good quality primer spray paint. And this is stuff that I use for model making and it works with all sorts of resins and plastic. Otherwise, the plastic of the plastic canvas will be too hydrophobic to take any paint. And then we just hang it up to dry and wait. And once it's dry, once, you, once all the shiny parts have gone off it, we can get back down and start to paint it. Because we're going to be actually dry brushing it, it's super important that the base coat is 100% dry. So how are we going to paint this purple mask? We're going to approach it from brown because we've got to think about what, what sort of colour depth are we going for? What effect are we trying to achieve? We are trying to make this mask look like either a purple wood or a painted purple mask. So we're starting from a wooden dry brush base coat. And how do we get that? We're mixing a dark grey with brown because wood isn't brown. Wood isn't this cartoonish brown. It's more a greyish because natural colours are quite muted. So things that you say are brown are usually a muted colour of brown. We're just taking our brush and dry brushing, making sure our brush doesn't have too much paint in it. It doesn't look wet when we look at it. It has no reservoir of paint in it. And we're just sweeping it over, catching all of the high details, making sure we miss all of the crevices. This keeps in all of the contrast of all of the details we put in and make sure that the creases, the seams, and we do a couple of layers of that going from a dark grey to a kind of slightly lighter greyish brown before we even think about introducing some purple. And when we do start to introduce the purple, we do it very gradually. When we're lightening this paint, we are not adding white. Because when you want to lighten or darken paint, you want to avoid adding white or black. They will change the colours that you're working with. What you want to do is find something further along the spectrum of what you're working with. So I'm actually lightening these with grey. And that'll keep the muted, natural look of this mask. And then once we've added the purple and lightened it slightly more, we then start to dry brush that over it again. You'll notice the first layer of purple dry brush doesn't add much color it doesn't add much color it doesn't look like a deep purple color yet that's because we are slowly building up a grayish purple to a more purple purple to a sort of darker purple while and every layer we're putting down slightly less paint the layer below it shows through and we get this rich wooden stained purple effect because if you've ever looked at a native mask they don't use thick acrylic paints and they tend to be old and worn out where the wood has been stained by the colors that have been put on it and the paints that were on it have been worn away and since kindred lamb and wolf are basically fairy tale characters it makes sense for their masks to be more natural but the last step that we actually use, we use a much lighter purple, but very sparingly because we're just going to catch the edges, the highlights. Basically, along the ridge of the nose, the ridge of the brow, at the edges of the mask, along the ears, and that just brings out the purpleness. And that is the dark purple base coat done. The interesting thing about simply dry brushing the colours on slowly, you can have your colour, your purple, go over it. But when you look from afar, the mask will look purple, look like a dark, deep, rich purple. But when you look quite close, you'll be quite surprised. There isn't actually that much purple on the mask. Most of it is still black or grey, and it gives this fantastic effect. But now we move on to the next technique, airbrushing. And this is what we're going to use for the eyes, because 
airbrushing, you can get this fantastic powdery mixed color effect. So you can make something look really nicely magical and light and bright. We're gonna start from a nice light base color. Because we're painting it over black, we want to put down white first. Here it's white mixed with a little bit of blue, just to make it a nice light blue because otherwise the colours that go over the top of it will be affected by the black base coat and almost washed out. If we put the white down and white ink from an airbrush is incredibly strong and go straight over black. As you can see we then move on to the, the darker blue and that goes over the white nice and vibrantly. Just going to do the same with the purple. We put down a light purple first and then the dark purple goes on over top. We're not being too worried about catching the, uh, the edges of the eye sockets because it creates an effect called Object Source Light, OSL, which actually makes it look like the eyes are glowing and glowing onto the edges around them. So that's kind of an accidental bonus you get from this. And then just a little bit of off-white in there to create the little stars in the eyes. We want to be quite sparing of these because we want to give the impression that they are twinkling rather than actual spots. And there are the eyes. And now we move on to the third technique. Although the third technique isn't exactly a fancy pants painting technique. This is literally just painting. We're just painting the white onto her symbol. But because we're going over black, we're actually using a very strong artist white acrylic paint. If we wanted it to be a perfect, brilliant white, we would be mixing up from a light gray and then going light gray, slightly lighter gray, white and white and doing a couple of layers. But because I'm wanting to make it look like a native mask, wanting it to look tribal, we're actually trying to allow it to look less perfect, to let some of the grain effect underneath that we put through to make it look worn and old. So from a distance, it will still look like a solid white. But if you look close, the underlying texture of the mask still shows through. So we're watering that acrylic down and painting it on, waiting for the layer below to dry and going over it again. And now with that done and dry, it just needs varnishing. Because this is a wooden mask and wants to look really naturalistic, I think it needs a matte varnish. So I hit it up with a matte varnish so it takes all the shine out of it and makes it look a lot more wooden and natural and the shine that any of the paints have left on it off. And we just hang it up to dry with its sister mask. There we go. Here is some up close shots of it. You can see the texture effect. You can see how it's been all brought out, how we've been utterly rewarded by all the effort we put in, in the sculpt. Dry brushing on that paint job has really brought out the texture we sculpted in there. And it's super easy. We're not trying to paint on a wooden texture. We're just bringing out what we've already put in there. And you can still see through the eyes. I hope you've learned something from this and have been inspired to approach painting in this way yourselves. But if you want to know more, please ask any questions in the comments and be sure to stick around, subscribe to this channel and hopefully in the next couple of days you'll get a chance to win this and also I'll show you how I paint my wolf mask as well. Thanks and goodbye.